What's going on you guys, Stacey Will here with another Ride to Food video and today we are going to review the Super 73 S2 e-bike. All right, you guys, so as many of y'all know, Super 73 hit me up earlier this year and told me they liked what I was doing with Ride to Food, and so they wanted to send me one of their S2 e-bikes to test out for a couple weeks and Ride to Food on. Um, I have had so much fun on this bike. Honestly, it really, really surprised me with how fun it is. Um, so today we are going to focus on the pros and cons, what I liked, what I didn't like, and you know, just typical review stuff. Now, I wanna go ahead and preface this review saying that I've never really ridden an e-bike before. This is the very first e-bike I've ridden. I've never even ridden an e-motorcycle. Um, closest thing I've gotten to an electric vehicle is a little bird scooter. <laughs> so that's my only knowledge on two-wheeled electric vehicles. Additionally, most of my two-wheeled knowledge comes from the motorcycle sector. However, when I talked to Super 73 about this bike, they also talked to me about, you know, getting a review from someone who has, you know, 10 years of experience riding motorcycles and how I felt about this bike. So take this review from that point of view. All right, so let's go ahead and start out with bike specifications. That's typically a thing you put in reviews. Although if you want, you can go to super73.com and you can get an entire list of bike specifications for each model they offer. So the bike is made with an aircraft grade aluminum alloy frame. It weighs about 73 pounds total. That is for the entire bike, not just the frame. So it's not entirely too heavy if you're gonna compare it to a motorcycle. I personally think it's pretty lightweight. I can pick up the back end and move the bike around. It's not that hard. Now you're gonna notice that the bike does not have rear suspension. It is a rigid on the rear end. However, the front end does have air adjustable suspension in the front you can adjust it i personally did not mess with it but that's up to you now you're probably wondering where the motor is on this thing because it's not in the frame this little tank is actually the battery this hub right here is actually going to be the uh, motor for this bike it is an internally geared hub motor and it will push out roughly 2,000 watts of peak power if you're really giving her the juice. Now, the S2 is also powered by a state-of-the-art 960 watt hour battery, the largest in the segment and provides an estimated 40 plus miles of range. However, we will dive into that a little bit later. The next feature that Super 73 really likes to highlight on the S2 is the LED 12 volt halo headlight. This is the brightest headlight offered on any of the Super 73 models. And quite frankly, it is pretty bright. I uh, wrote it down to get the mail the other day and it was probably nine o'clock at night. So the sun's down and yeah, it's bright. <laughs> it's, you can see everything with it at night for sure. Next on the list of features that Super 73 really likes to focus on on the S2 is going to be the five inch wide BDGR tires. The proprietary the military Super 73 tread pattern has been designed to improve traction, reduce road noise, and increase stability for both on-road and light-duty off-road riding. So that is what Super 73 mentions on their website. I would have to agree. Um, the tire, it, you really can't hear a bunch of noise. It's very smooth when you're riding at any speed, and the bike does handle well off-road. I will say that, and like I said, we'll get more into those details later on. Now. The, one of the other things is they say that this is a two-person seat. I personally would not say this is a two-person seat. I mean, unless you have a teeny little button that can go right up here. <laughs> uh, but I got a big old juicy booty and per personally, I bet you I take up about this much of this seat. So well over half of it. Um, if you're little, two people can definitely fit on this little e-bike. However, I personally would say that this is a one-person seat. So one thing I wanna touch on with the seat is that Yes, it's a little uncomfortable. However, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about the seat itself. It's not necessarily that the seat is uncomfortable. It's that the bike is a rigid. You're just not going to get the comfort that you would on a full suspension bicycle from a rigid bicycle. So any bump, I mean, even a crack in the sidewalk after time, you begin to absorb that energy from the bicycle since there is no shock to absorb that on its own. The last feature I wanna talk about with the Super 73 is that it does have an iOS and Android compatible app for your phone and the bike will connect directly through Bluetooth so that you can see 
all of the bike trails in your area, you can actually drop a pin and it will let you kind of route out where you're going. It'll show you elevations, estimated time, mileage. I mean, all kinds of stuff. This app is actually pretty great. Also in the app, you can go over to your vehicle settings and you can change mode selection. Now, when you're in pedal assist, you will be able to choose a different level. The levels do not associate with the exact class. The levels, from what I have learned, essentially are going to decide how fast the bike is going to accelerate. So level one is going to have a slower acceleration. Level four will have a faster one. You can choose the pedal assist level from inside the app and you can also go up here to your vehicle within the app and check out your mode selection. Down here, we'll go ahead and explain different modes. However, I like to keep mine in class four because it is going to be the fastest mode. And you will get up to 32 mile an hour pretty quick pretty quickly in class four under level four acceleration as well. You can also go to your dashboard and it'll show you your mileage. It'll show you your range, the um, wattage that the bike is putting out. I mean, it, it tells you all kinds of stuff, honestly, and we could be here for an hour talking about it, but I just wanted to let y'all know that it is a pretty cool feature. Okay, so now that we've done the general bike specification kind of to-do list there, let's go ahead and dive into the questions that y'all specifically asked me to review on this little S2 e-bike. So one of the popular questions y'all had was, is it street legal? Yes, it is street legal. And technically, as long as you're 16 or older, you should be able to legally ride it on the city streets. However, check with your local city and state ordinances because I know some cities do not allow e-bikes and I'm not going to be responsible for the tiny print that you did not read. So be sure to check that for your local city or state and go from there. A lot of y'all wanted to know about how fast the S2 can go. So that really depends which class you're in. Class one and two, you're gonna top out at about 20 mile per hour, no matter how you do it. Class three mode will put you at 28 mile an hour. And there is a class four in the app that you can unlock and it's called unlimited mode. And the bike will basically top out at 32 mile an hour. Now I did take it down a pretty steep hill from the top of a dam all the way to the bottom over at the lake. And I got it up to about 38 mile an hour on the little speedo on the handlebars. Um, and I will say that that's plenty fast for what this bike is. Even on paved bike paths, um, 20 mile an hour is usually like the speed limit on a bike path. So you're going about the average speed limit. Now, if you're gonna try and ride this thing on the city streets, yeah, I think it would be better suited for something like a neighborhood. I, I definitely would not try and ride this thing like down a main street with street lights. That's just personally not how I would wanna ride it. So now that we all know exactly how fast this bike will go, you guys really wanted to know how far you can go on a single charge. So if you watched my last video where we rode all the way from my house, 20 miles up the bike paths into downtown Denver, and made it back home on a single charge, you would know that you can definitely do 40 miles on a charge. I made it home with about 16% battery life. However, here's the kicker to that. I rode the bike all the way to Denver and back in class two mode, which allowed me to top out at 20 mile an hour and then also use pedal assist. There were times where it was flat enough where I just chose to pedal the bike. I did not rely fully on the thumb throttle the whole way there and back. If I would have relied on that thumb throttle, I probably wouldn't have made it back to my house. However, it was a really fun adventure and I'm glad I did it. Now I have gone out on the bike since then and have ridden it just in class four mode, which like I said, will let you do about 32 mile an hour with or without pedal assist. And I think I could have done about 40 miles on a charge but it really just depends because as soon as you start having to go up hills, it will start to eat that battery. So their website says that if you keep it in, I wanna say class two mode and you use the pedal assist option that you can get 70 plus miles range on a charge. I think that's a stretch. I don't think you can actually get that far on a charge, but maybe they mean if you're just pedaling, that would make a lot more sense. But I think that if you're using that thumb throttle that that 70 mile range is stretching it just a little bit, maybe downhill with like the wind pushing out your back, <laughs> you know? All right, next question y'all had, can you take it off any sweet jumps? All right, so I personally did not try and jump this thing off of anything. This is not my bike. I wanted to give it back to them in one piece. However, I did do some obstacle course like things. I did ride it off road. The tires do grip well in the dirt. It is a fun little bike. Um, I did ride it down some stairs that are actually right over here. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> and it was a bunch of fun. Um, I think that if you really wanted to, you could take this thing off some jumps, but you're probably gonna have to pedal a little bit to help keep the momentum going, depending on the terrain. Oh. <laughs> Class four mode definitely gives it a little more juice. Let's try to go through this rock pit really quick. Oh yeah, this is way easier in class four, way easier. <laughs> Dang, let's see if I make it. One, two, three, go. Oh, it's gonna make it. Woo. Will the bike do wheelies? Yes. Will I do wheelies on it? Mm -mm. I didn't this time, but what I, Probably. <laughs> so since probably a lot of y'all watched my previous video where we rode this thing all the way into Denver, I wanna go ahead and talk about urban versus suburban living and just kinda the functionality of this bike between the two. Now, I live in suburbia. I am about 15 miles by city streets from downtown Denver and about 20 via the bike paths, give or take. Um, luckily, I live pretty close to one of the main biking trails around the city. Um, so it's really easy for me to just hop on this thing and go wherever I want, especially with this app like I was talking about where it will show you exactly where to go ride. Now, Denver is a very popular city for bicycling. We have, I want to say it's like hundreds, if not thousands of miles of biking paths. Or it's a weird number. Maybe I'll put it over the screen right here. But a lot of people do use the biking paths here, um, which makes this very easy for me to get behind the idea of because I can go ride this thing everywhere and I don't necessarily have to rely on general city streets that may or may not have bicycle lanes to get around on. Now, on the other hand, if you live downtown in an urban environment, um, I think these things are great. Like, like we talked about, you know, it's got a 40 mile range on it. If you live in a city, that is plenty of juice to get anywhere. Most people that live in downtown city areas are not gonna go 20 miles one way on an e-bike. So I think that this is perfect for a downtown type of person. Also, I personally think it makes hanging out in downtown areas a lot more enjoyable. I am not the kind of person that likes to get on my motorcycle and go bar hopping every Saturday and Sunday downtown. Um, I did that a lot in my early 20s and it's just not my thing anymore. Um, I feel like downtown areas are very overpopulated and it's just, it's just not for me. If it's for you, that's awesome. Well, I think it actually makes commuting around downtown Denver a lot more enjoyable. I personally avoid it when I'm in my truck. I hate going into downtown Denver. It gives me such bad anxiety. But when I took this thing down to Denver the other day to go to that taco truck, I had a ton of fun. I actually was like down to stay and hang out and explore all the biking paths in Denver, which for me was actually a shocker. Like I was pretty shocked that I was having a lot of fun on this little bike. Um, People don't hear you. That is kind of a con, but yeah, people, because it's electric, people do not hear you. Um, but all things considered, that's really not a complaint. It's just something I observed. So let's talk about who should ride a Super 73. I don't necessarily think it's someone that lives in suburbia, and I don't necessarily think it's someone that lives in an urban community. So I'm 5'4", this has a seat height of 31 inches, and Super 73 recommends that if you are between the heights of 5'1 and 5'6, that this should be a comfortable bike for you. I'm completely flat footed and I wanna say I have a 31 inch inseam and like I said, I'm 5'4". So yeah, I think that this bike is really fun and I personally don't find it intimidating at all. I think that anyone can really benefit from this bike. And I say that because I've been riding motorcycles for 10 years and I have a blast on this thing. If y'all haven't noticed in all of the B-roll that I've kind of pushed in throughout this video, um, I'm laughing a bunch like a lot, a lot. <laughs> um, I've had so much fun. I've smiled so much riding this thing. And like, you you, you can't, like the, the happiness that this little thing has brought me is truly priceless. It's been 
so, so fun to ride. Um, honestly, it really impressed me for the e-bike world. I wasn't expecting to have this much fun on one of these little bikes. But let's say that you've never ridden a motorcycle and maybe it's something that you wanna get into. I can see where this bike could be beneficial for you. Um, the, the ergonomics are a little bit different. Of course, this thing is so lightweight. It's just not gonna feel like, you know, a Sportster or a heavier cruiser style motorcycle. The, the balancing and the weight ratios are just completely different. However, if you're just trying to get your feet wet and get something two wheeled related underneath you, I think this is a great start. And I think you would have a really fun time ripping around on one of these. Um, and I think too, that one thing that I have found really interesting as I've been researching Super 73 the last two weeks is that they actually have a very good community environment. I have searched the Super 73 hashtag as well as I wanna say Super Squad is what it's called. And people customize these things, which I think is really cool, but they also have like rides and meetups to go places like coffee or food. And the community factor factor of this leads in to my next point, and that is the customization. So as y'all know, I don't leave anything stock. None of my vehicles are stock. Um, and Super 73 really welcomes customization. They just partnered with ASAP Rocky to do one. And if you look at their community, a lot of their community members customize their bikes to make them their own. I'm actually gonna put a couple of them up on the screen right now so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's even one that someone put like a boom box right in the middle of the frame here. And it's, I mean, it's a huge like JBL speaker. And when I look at that photo, I'm just like, that person has gotta be having the time of their life, like just cruising down the road on this thing. I mean, it's so cool. Um, another thing, of course, is that it's made me wanna customize my own now. So I've started, of course, getting the wheels turning and thinking about how I would customize one. And I really want one that has like a, like cobalt blue or candy orange, like bright tangerine orange frame. I guess candy's not the right, right word, but um, I wanna add like a chrome sissy bar to the back, kind of get a custom banana seat style thing going and put some apes on it and of course, music, gotta find a way to put music on it. And I think it would just make like the perfect little beach cruiser. And I just love that that's a normal thing in the Super 73 community. Um, so yeah, I think that if Super 73 gave me the option to customize one of these and keep it, wink, wink, um, I would be riding it to food all the time. You would absolutely see it on this channel more often. Cause like I said, I've just had so much fun on this little bike. Now it's the moment y'all have all been waiting for is the one complaint I have about this bike. And it is that I need a buddy. <laughs> I think that when riding a motorcycle on the street, I really enjoy riding alone. That's more my thing. However, when I go ride a motorcycle, I typically go off into wide open spaces where I kind of enjoy being alone. Now the Super 73 is a little different. I'm not really riding this places where I'm going to be alone. I'm riding to a coffee shop or a restaurant or the post office or somewhere where it's just a day to go cruising. And I think that this is just a, this is a vehicle that is better spent with friends. So I think that if I was ever going to get my hands on another one, I would really want to have a pair so that if anyone I knew wanted to go riding with me, I would have an additional one. Now, if you're buying this out of pure necessity to like use as a commuter vehicle or something else, obviously that opinion doesn't matter. But I feel like if you're buying this because you wanna go have fun on one of these, I think that getting to sit back and cruise and just chill with your friends is honestly the way to do it on this bike. And watching people on the bicycle pass, you know, you always see the bicyclist in groups and I kind of miss that camaraderie aspect when I'm riding this thing alone. All things considered, that's really not the biggest complaint, but it is my biggest complaint about the S2. Now, one of the most popular questions that people typically have is how expensive is this little e-bike? So the Super 73 S2 is $2,700. It is not the most expensive in the Super 73 lineup. It is also not the cheapest. It's about right in the middle. So you can go anywhere from, I wanna say $1,500 all the way up to $3,500 right now. However, you're gonna to wanna to check out super73.com for all of the most up-to-date MSRP pricing on all of their models. But I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the very first bike review I've gotten to do on this channel, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, thank you, Super73, for letting me borrow this S2 for a couple of weeks. It's been a blast to ride around on, and I can totally see myself in the summer cruising around on one to food and enjoying the summer sun here in Colorado. 
But yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the bike down below. Uh, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you wanna see more, and I will see y'all on the road. Later, y'all.